Ciao friends, and welcome to a new SQL BI video. In this video, I want to answer one important question. Is it better to build a regular star schema or performance-wise, is it better to denormalize all the columns and build a single table data model? The reason why people are interested in this is because of performance. In a regular star schema, you need to pay the price of relationships. Whereas if you denormalize everything into a single table, you do not have to pay the price of a relationship. Therefore, the model might be faster. This is not actually true. In some, some scenario, it is faster, but in most of the scenarios, a star schema is way better. But I wanted to prove that. I want to give an authoritative answer. And to do that, I created a data model with 4 billion rows so that we see numbers that are uh, meaningful. We see a difference, which is important between uh, the two data models. And I build them both as a star schema and, and a single table. Let's look at what I did. This is uh, the star schema. As any star schema, we have the fact table in the center and then dimensions around it. Whenever I run a query on this model, what I need to do is use the relationship. Indeed, I will slice by one column in the dimension, but I will group values coming from the center fact table. And in order to move the filter from the dimension to the fact table, the engine needs to use the relationship. Therefore, it has to pay a price which depends on the size of relationship, on cardinality, on a lot of different factors, but there is a price to pay. Then I created another model where everything is denormalized into one table. So all the columns from the different dimensions are now into this single table. And the logic why this model should be faster is because now when I slice by one column in the table and I compute values from the same table, I do not have to pay the price of a relationship. Everything happens in the same table. I called these two models the slim model, the star schema. I called it slim because audience contains a fewer, a smaller number of columns. Whereas the data model where everything is into a single table is called the fat model because the table is much wider, it contains a lot of columns and potentially might be faster. What we will do is first look at the size of the two data models, inspect the uh, final result and then we start running queries. And in the process of running queries, we do some reasoning in order to understand why sometimes one model is faster and sometimes the other one is better. At the end, once we have gathered all this information, we will draw some conclusion and choose the best one. Let's get started. Let's start by analyzing the sides of the slim and the fat model. Size is important, is probably the most relevant topic when looking at a tabular data model. Because, of course, scanning a small column is much faster than scanning a large column. That is why we analyze first the size of the two models and we do some reasoning on top of that. What I have here is DAX Studio, which is connected to both the slim model and the fat model. Let's start with the slim model. We look at the matrix, increase the font a bit, and we start to do some reasoning on top of that. First of all, we have several tables. Audience is the primary fact table, and then we have all the dimension. You see that the size of dimension is not relevant at all. The, the total space of the data model is used in the fact table, which is around 18 gigabytes. If we expand the columns, you see that we have columns which are large, columns which are small. You can see the size here. Time, for example, is around 6.5 gigabytes, whereas weight is 2.6 gigabytes, and age, that only has 96 value, is much smaller. The size somewhat depends on the cardinality because age is small, because it does not have a lot of values, but it also depends on the sort order. 
if you look at time, time has 1400 values and uses 6.5 gigabytes. Another column like date that has again 1.5, uh, 1500 values, it's tiny, only 70 kilobytes. The reason, the reason for this uh, difference between the two columns is the sort order. Date changes very slowly, whereas time changes very frequently. Therefore, the compression algorithm of uh, Vertipak is not able to compress uh, uh, time as well as it compresses date. So this is a regular model, and uh, the number to remember is 18 gigabytes. Let's look at uh, the large model and look at the metrics of that. The first thing that you notice is that we only have one table, we no longer have dimension, but the most important part is the size. Now it's 47 gigabytes. 47 gigabytes compared with 18 gigabytes. That is two, three times larger. The reason is now the number of large columns increase by a lot. Before, we had the ID time that was using 6.5 gigabytes, and here is the same. But look at other columns. Howard Minute is one of the attributes of uh, ID time, and again, it uses 6.5 gigabytes. Period 5 minutes, period 10 minutes, uh, all these are columns uh, which previously were stored as attributes of the time dimension. Now all these columns are denormalized in the fact table, therefore they change very frequently and they use a lot of space. So the first important thing to notice is that uh, the size of the entire model is much larger with the fat model than with the small model. There are other considerations. While it is true that uh, uh, you need to pay the price of a relationship whenever you use uh, the slim model, when you use the FAT model, you need to scan columns which are larger. If you group by period 5 minutes, you still have to scan 6.5 gigabytes. Therefore, you do not have to pay the price of relationship, but the size of the column at some point will start to weigh in and slow down the single model, the single table model, the FAT model. So now that we have a picture of the size of the different uh, of the two models, Let's start running some queries and gather some measurements. The first query that we run groups by individual's age range and computes the sum of audience weight. Now, individual is a dimension that contains 144,000 values and the column that joins the two tables is 2.5 gigabytes in terms of size. Age range contains a very small number of distinct values because it groups individuals by age range. So it will contain six, seven different values. But in order to move the filter between age range and uh, the fact table, the engine needs to scan the ID individual column, which is kind of large. Let's see how the performance on the slim model first. We run it, look at the server timings and it takes 11 seconds. Uh, the first thing to note is the difference between the total execution time and the storage engine CPU time. Total execution time is the time we had to wait for the query to run. Storage engine CPU is the amount of CPU power that has been used in order to answer the query. We are not going to look at the total execution time because we are running on a powerful machine where we have 64 virtual cores. Therefore, you see the degree of parallelism is 53.6, very high, very high. The number that we are going to use is uh, the storage engine CPU that gives a better picture of uh, how much power has been used in order to answer the query. So 11 seconds is the time required to answer the, the first simple query on the slim model. What about the FAT model? On the FAT model, oh, last thing, if we look at uh, the XM SQL query, you see that we do have a join between the fact table and the dimension, which is working on the ID individual column. So it's clear that we are paying the price of a join in order to answer this query. What about the fact table, the FAT model? If I run the very same query on the FAT model, where at this time I group by audience age range and not by individual age range, so everything is happening in a single table. 
and we run the query. It now takes 6.6 .6 seconds. If we look at the query, there are no joins. So 6.6 .6 seconds against 11 seconds. It is made much, much faster. Working with the FAT model, not having to traverse the relationship, we have a large benefit because the relationship has a price. And if we can avoid using the relationship, of course, the model is faster. Does it mean that the FAT model is always faster? Not really. As long as we go on with the next queries, you will see that this advantage will become smaller and smaller and smaller. The second query that I want to test does the same summarize column, but this time we use time period 5 minutes. Time is a very large um, dimension because the column in the fact table is very large, 6.5 gigabytes as we saw earlier. Therefore, now the price of the relationship is large because uh, the column to scan is large, but also in the FAT model, this column will be larger. So the difference will be now a bit smaller, or at least I would expect the difference to be smaller. Let's run first the query on the slim model. It was 11 seconds with the previous query. Now it's around 29 seconds, 28 and a half a second. And now the join is happening on time. So 30 seconds, around 30 seconds is the time needed on the slim model. What about the, the FAT model? Now the FAT model needs to scan a very large column in the FAT table and it takes 25 seconds. Let's run it again just to be sure. Yes, 25 seconds. So 28 against 25. You see that now the difference is no longer so relevant. It was more important earlier because ID individual denormalized in the fact table resulted in a smaller column compared with period five, time, five minutes. Period five minutes is very large and being very large requires time to scan. Even though we do not have to pay the price of relationship, but we need to scan large columns. So as, long, as soon as your columns start to grow, the benefit of using the FAT model start to be reduced. The third query, uh, let me gain some space. The, first, the third query groups by different columns in the same dimension. So in the slim model, we group by time, and in the FAT model, we group everything by audience. So same query using different tables. Now, here we will have one single join with uh, the fact table, and we use different columns from the dimension. Let's look at the time required to run this query. I totally don't remember the time needed, so we will look at that. And you see that now numbers start to grow. 65 seconds in order to answer the query. One second was the wait time, but 65 seconds is the total CPU time used. And we have one join, and we have the grouping by different columns in the XM SQL query. What about the FAT model? Let's run it here. Now we have to scan multiple large columns, and it runs in 68 seconds. As usual, we run it multiple times when the numbers are not as expected. I always run them multiple times. 56 is a better feature. Let's run it a third time. Yes, 56. It has to wake up the CPU at the beginning. So 56 seconds against 65 seconds. It is still faster to scan the fat table, but the numbers are getting closer and closer. They become closer when the size of the columns needed to scan increases. By the way, I was not totally expecting this result. Because in this scenario, uh, the column to scan is only one, whereas here we have to scan three columns. In the slim model, we have only to scan the relationship once. So the relationship is the large column that needs to be scanned once. All the other scanning happen on uh, the dimension. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, the difference is starting to be uh, smaller. So far, we just used sum, so simple calculation. 
Let's try some heavier calculation, like a distant count. What happens if I group by time period of 5 minutes and I do a distant count of ID individual? ID individual is a slowly changing dimension, so we will have the option of running two kinds of queries. One that does a distant count on the surrogate key ID individual, and then we will do the distant count of the natural key code individual, which in the slim model is stored in the dimension, whereas in the fat model is stored already in the uh, fact table. So again, we will see a difference between the two because once we will have to pay multiple relationships and in the other case, we will have to pay no relationships at all. But let's start looking at the surrogate key. Distant count of time period. Let's run it once. And uh, that, you see, it started to slow down. It's no longer as fast as before. Now it takes something like 500,000 milliseconds. Eight seconds is the time required to answer. And uh, we do the grouping by time period five minutes and we pay one join the price of one join. But the numbers start to grow. All the time is still all storage engine. What about uh, the FAT model? We have the same distant count. We run it on the FAT model. And uh, I want to evaluate the difference. I totally don't remember what the result will be. But because distant count is heavier than a sum, um, I expect the number to be different. And uh, actually it is. Look at uh, the slim 498 and the fat 469. Now they are very, very close. They are nearly the same. The reason is... Uh, Paying the price of a relationship is important, but as soon as your calculations start to be heavier, then there will be, uh, that difference will no longer be so relevant. So now the distance between the slim model and the fat model is further reduced. What if we do the distant count of the natural key? If we want to do the distant count of the natural key on the slim model, we need to traverse the relationship because uh, the column that I want to distant count is code individual in the dimension. I need to summarize uh, the fact table by the dimension and then count the rows. Finally, I group them by period of five minutes. In uh, this query, I will no longer pay the price of one relationship only. I pay the price of one relationship to do the grouping by, plus another relationship because I want to count values which are in a different dimension. It's actually faster, you see, 242,000 milliseconds. The reason is that the number of distinct values of the code is smaller than the number of distinct value of the surrogate key because it's a slowly changing dimension. So we have fewer codes than surrogate keys. And we do have to pay the price of two relationships, one with time and one with individuals. So this is the value on the uh, slim model. What about the FAT model? We run this distant count on the FAT model. The difference is now, now everything is happening on the same table. So we no longer have to do a distant a count rows of a summarize, just a distant count of code individual. Again, it's faster than the FAT model. Uh, not so fast, but still faster. 200 milliseconds against 242 milliseconds. So for these kind of queries, the FAT model is quite always faster. How much faster? That depends on the complexity of the query that you want to run. But the thing is, not all the queries are the same. Let's try to do another distant count. Uh, let's do that on the slim model. This time we do not group by one column, we group by multiple columns. I group by date by time, and then I can compute the uh, distant count of code individual. So now three different relationships are involved. Again, which one will be faster? Let's test it. We run the first query on the slim model. Now what I expect is uh, three relationships being involved, one, in date, one with date, one with time, and one with individuals in order to do the group by, the um, distant count. 
That's very slow. It takes uh, 24 seconds. And now numbers are starting to grow. One point, around 1.2 million milliseconds because we had to scan to use multiple relationships. We have uh, the distinct count of individuals. And then we have the three left outer join. It's interesting to see that uh, even though we asked for a count rows of summarizer, the optimizer actually computed a distinct count using the three relationship. So the optimizer did a quite good job in understanding our intention. So three relationships and now the numbers start to grow. 24 seconds is the time needed to run the query on the slim model. What about the fat model? Oh, we already have it here. Run the query. We know it's gonna take some time. The query this time will no longer need to traverse the relationship, but it needs to scan the year, the month number, and the period five minutes. Year and month number are not very large, period five minutes is large, and it needs to mash up multiple columns. Even though the columns are from the same table, it still needs to pay the price of merging the partial results. And you see that now the numbers are nearly the same. 1161 is the storage engine CPU for the FAT model. 1191 is for the slim model. The difference is really tiny. The more complex the query becomes, the smaller the difference becomes. So while it is true that uh, the FAT model is faster with very simple queries, as soon as your queries start to be a bit more complex, uh, then the distance between the FAT model and the, the slim model is very, very much reduced. Therefore, what you will gain, what looks like a real gain at the beginning, is starting to be thinner and thinner as long as the queries become more complex. Again, we have no relationships involved, but still a lot of time. What happens if we make a more complex query? Because so far, we just used the storage engine. We never used the formula engine. We didn't create calculations which are really heavy, just simple sum or distant count. What if we do a year to date? A simple calculation, but that requires to use the formula engine. The year to date is very simple to express as DAX code on the slim model, whereas it is much more complex to express on the FAT model, because on the slim model we could leverage the dates YTD function that we cannot use on the FAT model, because dates YTD, like all time intelligence calculation, requires a properly designed time dimension. Nevertheless, because I wanted to compare the performance of the two, I used the very same code both on the slim and on the fat model. So we have a comparison of the speed and not a comparison about how simple or hard it is to use DAX on the two different models. Let's look at the YTD on the slim model. Now we need a bit more space to look at the code. To compute the YTD, we group by year, by month number, by period five minutes. So we have three different columns for the grouping by. And then we compute this calculation by taking the current year, the current date, and compute the measure, the sum of weight, where the date is after the year start, but uh, no, sorry, year start is the beginning of time, the beginning of the year. So is a date that takes the current year and the 1st of January. Current date is the last date. And we take uh, the sum of weight for all the dates uh, after the 1st of January and uh, before the current date. All is useful to remove any filter. So this is computing uh, just uh, a YTD. Let's run it. Now we have both storage engine and formula engine at the same time. And you see that we no longer have one single storage XM SQL query. We have multiple queries because the engine needs to gather first the individual values day by day. 
and then it computes uh, the values in Formula Engine. You see that Formula Engine starts to weigh in and uh, eat some part of uh, the CPU usage. The main query runs in 60 seconds, 60 seconds of storage engine CPU, and it is retrieving, grouping by period date, it's retrieving the sum of weight using a join with time and a join with date. In the where condition, we have a condition on the date, because we first retrieve all the values at the day level, and then Formula Engine actually computes the year to date, summing individual values. The important note here is that in the where condition, we only have the date. So 1796 different values is the size of the filter used to move a filter from date to the fact table. The same query on the FAT model. You see, it's uh, the very same query. So we just need to highlight it and then run it. Now, the problem of uh, the, FAT the FAT model in this scenario is that uh, the engine can no longer rely on uh, specific optimization that exists for star schemas. Because now, because all the columns are from the same table, it needs to use an arbitrarily shaped set in order to do the calculation. Let's first look at the total time, 140,000 milliseconds compared with 60,000 milliseconds. That is more than twice the amount of CPU required. And the reason for this uh, slower speed is because uh, the first queries are nearly the same, but the query that retrieves the values day by day is no longer simple as it was the case in the slim model. It is still grouping by date, period, and compute the sum of weight, but look at the filter. The filter now is not only on the date, but on the date and on the period over five minutes, and it contains 457,000 different values. The same on the slim model was using only 1700 distinct values and the filter was only working on the date. The reason is that now, because I'm grouping by columns in the same table, auto exist kicks in and the query becomes much, much slower. Not only we have seen that uh, the FAT model, is, the, the benefits of the FAT model are reduced with uh, the increasing complexity of the query. But you reach a point where the code you start to write is no longer so simple, where the FAT model becomes much slower than the slim model. So for very simple queries, uh, the FAT model is faster, but as soon as the queries start to grow in complexity, the FAT model becomes much, much slower and uh, really slower. It was more than twice the, the speed of uh, the simple model. There is another scenario that I want to look at with you before leaving the topic that are very simple queries. There are a lot of queries that uh, your DAX engine needs to perform just because you create a slicer in the report. Imagine that you just uh, create a slicer in a report by period, by year, by month, by whatever column you want to slice for. In order to fill the values of this slicer, the engine needs to run a simple query, a very simple one that is just values of that column. But here is the difference. This query, when executed on the slim model, will scan the dimension. But the same query executed on the FAT model needs to scan the fact table because that is the only table that is available. So to gather only 10 different values, the distinct values of the year, for example, the FAT model will have to scan 4 billion rows, whereas the slim model scans a few thousand rows. So there the difference is going to be quite important. Let's look at that. The next query, we run it on the slim model first, just compute values. Calculate table values of time period of five minutes. If I run it, I expect it to be super fast. Actually, it's taking one millisecond to run because the query runs on the time dimension. It's retrieving the period of five minutes from time. What about the FAT model? If we run the very same simple query on the FAT model, 
it takes 111 milliseconds, but, and here is the important number, five seconds of CPU time to run the query. Because in order to retrieve the values of period five minutes, the engine had to scan the audience table, four billion rows. And it's not that simple. Not only it's already very slow, but you need to pay attention to cross-filtering. If you just put one slicer, that is easy. But uh, what if you put multiple slicers in the same report? That happens all the time. If you put multiple slicers coming from different dimensions in the slim model, they will not cross-filter each other. But if you put multiple slicers from uh, multiple columns in the FAT model, they will cross-filter each other because they belong to the same table. So the next query that we look at is uh, again values, but this time filtered by another column. And let's look at the difference. Values filter on the slim model. Now computes the values of time period where audience age is greater than zero. The filter from audience age does not reach the timetable. And if I run the, the query, it, stay, it takes only three milliseconds because it still selects the value from the time dimension. The same query executed on the FAT model. That is going to take a bit longer. Indeed, 20 seconds. So it's taking 20 seconds of CPU time to run a simple query that retrieves the values of a column. Now the difference is really huge. For very simple queries that group values where relationships are involved, the FAT model is faster. Not that faster. As soon as the query increases in complexity, the benefit is reduced and reduced and reduced. And when you reach a given level of complexity, then the FAT model starts to be slower than, uh, than the slim model. But for Simple query for very simple queries that retrieve only values of columns. Here is where the difference is really huge. The FAT model is so much slower compared with the slim model. Now, let's draw some conclusion by looking at all the numbers together. Let's draw some conclusion. I have synthesized all the values here. So these are all the queries that we executed from 1 to 10 with the storage engine CPU time and on the slim and on the fat model. What is important to note is that there is a difference. You see that for these first queries, the fat model was actually faster than the slim model because the price of the relationship was kind of important. But as soon as the queries start to increase in complexity, then the difference is no longer so relevant. The more complex the code to run is, the smaller the difference becomes. And uh, if uh, you look at uh, uh, group by over different dimension, like these queries, then uh, actually the difference uh, is uh, tiny. The FAT model start to slow down as soon as uh, you have uh, code that is just not trivial. Very simple code that only uses storage engine, there the FAT model is likely to be faster. But as soon as uh, the formula engine waits in, then the FAT model is much slower. And uh, for very simple queries uh, that only retrieve uh, values, uh, look at the difference, you go from uh, 2 milliseconds uh, to, sorry, not that one, you go from 1 millisecond here to 5 milliseconds, 5 seconds, 20 seconds. And it's important to also look at the number together because it is true that, uh, uh, let me clear some stuff. It is true that a query can be very fast using 6 seconds against 11 seconds on. Uh, the slim model, but as soon as you add a slicer to your report, you will have to pay the price for not only the query, but also for the slicer. And if you sum these values together, 
you get a much larger value than the same calculation than on the slim model. So all this goes to a very simple conclusion. No matter what, the star schema still wins, and it wins by a lot. There are actually no real reason to merge everything, everything into a single fat table. By doing that, you have the feeling that some queries are faster, but you obtain a model that is three times as large, and it's actually slower for most of the queries than the star schema. If you are ever in doubt whether to go for a star schema or for a single fat table, well, take the time to measure it. Take the time to check the numbers. What you are likely to find is that a star schema always wins. Enjoy that. <laughs>